Hello there, I'm Ashling and I read and then talk about books and today I'm gonna talk about books that I want to read in May. So the first book that I want to read in May isn't out yet but it's been sitting in my little net galley collection for the past little while and it's out in June so I want to get to that in May and that book is a book by Julia Armfield and it's called Private Rights. So I read Julia Armfield's previous novel which was called Air Wives Under the Sea last summer and I found it just really sat with me and I really loved it for a long time afterwards and that was a book about a married couple where one of them goes on an expedition in the sea in a submarine and comes back kind of changed and it was just really interesting. It really got inside my skin. There was a bit of body horror in it and I, I think Technically, it is referred to as horror, but it's not scary. It's just kind of unsettling. It was really good. But we're not talking about what I've already read. We're talking about private rights, which is coming out soon. So I'm going to read the little blurb from Goodreads. The best-selling author of Air Wives Under the Sea returns with a stunning, unsettling novel following three sisters navigating queer love and faith at the end of the world. It's been raining for a long time now welcome to Ireland, for so long that the lands have reshaped themselves and the cities have retreated to higher stories. Old places have been lost, arcane rituals and religions have crept back into practice. Sisters Isla, Irene and Agnes have not spoken in some time when their estranged father dies. A famous architect revered for making the new world navigable, he had long cut himself off for public life. They find themselves uncertain of how to grieve his passing when everything around them seems to be ending anyway. As the sisters come together to clear the grand glass house that is the pinnacle of his legacy, they begin to sense that the magnetic influence of their father lives on through it. Soon it becomes clear that others have also taken an interest in both his estate and in them and that perhaps their inheritance may not be theirs alone. So it does seem to kind of deal with some similar things as her previous novel. So it's a queer novel as well. It's described as stunning and unsettling. And I just have a feeling that this is another one that I'm really going to like. I don't actually request that many arcs from NetGalley, but this was one that came up and I was like, I really want to get my hands on that and I have, so I really need to read it. Next up then is a book I've been talking about reading for such a long time now, I swear. It is the third book in the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson and that book is Oathbringer. I don't want to read the blurb to this because I feel like there is a big spoiler just in like the first sentence about the previous book, but this book is part of a series that is an epic high fantasy series. The books are all 1000 plus pages long. We follow multiple points of view, mainly from three different characters, but we do split off to other points of view as well. We're set in a world where there are these high storms and they come and they absolutely wreak havoc, but these storms also bring power as well. Not just like magical power or anything like that, although there is that, but it also brings things like light. It's quite difficult to explain, but there are some really great magic systems. There is a lot going on, so I'm not going to go too far into it, but I really want to read this book so that I, I can get on with them and I can be ready for the fifth book when it's published in December. Next up then I have a non-fiction book. I don't actually read all that much non-fiction, although lately I feel like I have been requesting quite a bit more of it. I think I found my brand of non-fiction. I don't like self-help, but I do like non-fiction that deals with one topic quite in depth. I do tend to enjoy things to do with kind of like quiet lives and environmentalism and maybe kind of low level philosophy as well and just things I suppose that align with my own values, things that I'm personally interested in. And I requested this one from my library on the recommendation of my friend. So this book in particular is called Quiet and it's written by Susan Cain and the subtitle is The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. Now I do believe that this book was written a little while ago, yeah 2012, so it'll be interesting to see if it still kind of holds up to date. I am very much an introvert, have always been very introverted and I think sometimes people feel a little bit surprised by that because I'm able to hide it really well but that doesn't mean I'm not really just drained and uncomfortable underneath sometimes in social situations. I'll just read the back of this first, I thought this was quite nice. So shh, 
listen. That's the sound of your thoughts. If you are happy with what you hear, you may be an introvert. For too long, those who are naturally quiet, serious or sensitive have been overlooked. The loudest have taken over, even if they've nothing to say. It's time for everyone to listen. It's time to harness the power of introverts. It's time for quiet. But then the kind of longer blurb inside is, the introvert extrovert divide is the most fundamental dimension of personality. And at least a third of us are on the introverted side. Some of the world's most talented people are introverts. Without them, we wouldn't have Apple computer, the theory of relativity and Van Gogh's sunflowers. Yet extroverts have taken over. Sensitivity and seriousness are often seen as undesirable. Introverts feel reproached for being the way that they are. In Quiet, Susan Cain shows how the brain chemistry of introverts and extroverts differs and how society misunderstands and undervalues introverts. She gives introverts the tools to understand themselves and to take full advantage of their strengths. Passionately argued, superbly researched and filled with real stories, quiet will permanently change how you see introverts and how you see yourself. I actually went home and mentioned to my partner that I wanted to read this book and he was like, oh, I read that, it's really good. So I think based on those recommendations, I have to read it. Although I will have to bring this copy back to the library, but thankfully my partner actually has a copy I can borrow, get off in today, I think actually, so that's great. I don't tend to get excited about non-fiction in the way that I do about fiction, but there's something about this one that I think might sit really nicely with me. I am definitely a person who is energized spending time by myself rather than kind of being out and about in the world. I find socialising really draining and really difficult sometimes. Although, as I've mentioned, I do hide it really well. Also, what's interesting, I think, as well, is the fact that I'm so introverted leads me to be somebody that enjoys reading. It's a very solitary pursuit. And if I wasn't introverted, I wouldn't have this channel, in a sense. So yeah, I'm quite looking forward to reading that. Next up, I have four more books that I hope to read. I'm just gonna pick them up as they come. So this one needs absolutely no introduction. It is a Sarah J Maas book. It's A Court of Wings and Ruin. It is the third book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So I read the first book, A Court of Thorns and Roses, ages ago. Didn't love it, but like thought it was okay. I gave it three stars. And then last, maybe October, November, I decided to pick up the second book. I think it's called A Court of Mist and Fury. And I really enjoyed that one so much more than the first one and bought this then in the airport in November but still haven't actually read it. It is a young adult fantasy. They're known for being a little bit spicy. I am actually not going to read you the back of this book either because, again, spoilers as it is the third book in the series, but I'm looking forward to it. They tend to be a really kind of easy, fast-paced read, and I've heard good things about this one. It's a bit longer than the other ones, I think, but I think the days are getting a bit brighter now, and I'm kind of in the mood for, like, easy, fun, young adult fantasies, so this sounds to me exactly like it's going to fit the bill. Okay, and one more young adult fantasy, and this one is a series that I kind of knocked my way through last year. So the series in question is the Mortal Instruments series written by Cassandra Clare and I am finally on the last book and that book is City of Heavenly Fire. So this one is kind of chunky too. These books are written quite young, probably younger than the Akatera series. I've just been kind of toddling my way through them as an adult. I never read them when I was younger and they are, yes, a little bit dated and maybe not the best books, but I've been having a lot of fun with them. I think I read the first three physically and then the books four and five I read on audio, so I might try to get this one on audio as well. But basically this series follows a young girl called Clary Frey. It's an urban fantasy. She lives in New York. She's brought up just as a regular girl, but one day she kind of uncovers a lot of things, realizes that she is in fact a shadow hunter, so somebody that hunts kind of demons and things like that and she's drawn into this kind of underworld where there are vampires and demons and just a lot of like kind of occult things going on and it's definitely a young adult fantasy. There's sprinklings of romance thrown in there and I'm looking forward to seeing how this series finishes up. I haven't loved it 
but I've quite enjoyed it all the same. And then next up are two books that I've bought just very recently, two brand new releases. And the first book that I'm going to mention of those is Hagstone by Sinead Gleeson. I read Constellations by Sinead Gleeson a few years ago now. It's a sort of memoir, so it's written as a series of essays. It deals with things such as being a woman, living in a woman's body, femininity, feminism. It deals with a lot to do with the body. It deals with illness. It deals with grief. It was a stunning read and I'm really excited to be reading her debut novel. So this book is blurbed by so many incredible authors. Uh, Douglas Stewart, Maggie O'Farrell, David Nichols, Emily Pine, Elaine Feeney, Patrick Frayne. She gets such high praise and I'll tell you what it's about now. Look at that green, isn't the colour combination just sort of stunning. And also a little bit blinding, but yeah, no, it's really nice. So, the sea is steady for now. The land readies itself. What can be done with the woman on the cliff? On a wild and rugged island, cut off and isolated to some, artist Nell feels the island is her home. It is a source of inspiration for her art, rooted in landscape, folklore and the feminine. The mysterious Indians, a commune of women who have travelled there from all over the world, consider it a place of refuge and safety, of solace in nature. So Inian is an Irish word that means daughter. All the islanders live alongside the strange murmurings that seem to emanate from within the depths of the island, a sound that is almost supernatural, a summoning as the Inians call it. One day a letter arrives at Nell's door from the reclusive Inians, who invite her into the commune to produce a magnificent art piece celebrating their long history. In its creation, Nell will discover things about the community and about herself that will challenge everything she thought she knew. Beautifully written, prescient and eerily haunting, this debut novel from acclaimed Irish bestseller Sinead Gleeson takes in the darker side of human nature and the mysteries of faith and the natural world right up my street i'm telling you now i've heard such good things about this as well i'm so like foaming at the mouth to read it honestly it's something that i feel like i'm really gonna love i don't know if you've noticed if you read a lot of irish authors but they often talk about landscape as if it's almost another character in the novel and this is yet another one that seems like it's going to do that and it also deals with art in the feminine and it sounds almost a little bit sort of occulty but not might be similar in sort of tone in a way to private rights but they're probably completely different books i will let you know what i think of it in my may wrap up because i will 100 percent get around to this and then last up but certainly not least is lee bardugo the familiar so this is lee bardugo's first standalone it is an adult fantasy novel it sounds incredibly gothic so it is set in Spain's like golden age and I think we follow a maid or housekeeper and she's working for a family that are sort of nobility but they're struggling financially they're kind of on the lower end of the pecking order in terms of no nobility they're struggling with money and it's discovered that our housekeeper who I believe is our protagonist can perform miracles and the lady of the house who is quite cruel I believe to our housekeeper discovers this and tries to take advantage of it to push her own place in society so our housekeeper ends up sort of competing with other people who can perform miracles as well it sounds like it might be rooted in like maybe organised religion, something along the lines of Catholicism. Just this whole idea of performing miracles, I don't know. I haven't read the blurb. I'm going by what I've heard of it, but I've heard mixed things about it, but really good things from the people that seem to have quite similar tastes to me. So hopefully this will be something that I will really enjoy. I'm really looking forward to it. I do still have, I think, four Libra Dugo books, but to read but they're all part of series and I'm looking forward to a bit of a palette cleanser in the form of a Libra Dugo standalone. And that's that, that's me for May. So hopefully I can get through these as I've mentioned Oathbringer is over a thousand pages but that is going to be my priority alongside then the rest of these books as well. So we'll see how we go. It's not a promise, it's just a suggestion. So let me know what you're planning to read in May. Did you read anything that really tickled your fancy last month in April? Let me know. Also I just again want to really thank you for watching and I just want to put 
it out there as well if there are any videos in particular any topics that you would like me to cover please do let me know in the comments because I'm kind of getting to that point where I realize that there are a few more of you around than there used to be what uh, not being sarcastic it kind of blows my mind that I read and people want to hear about it amazing but yeah if there's anything that you'd like me to tackle anything you'd like to see more of anything you'd like to see less of please do let me know otherwise i hope you're doing well i hope you're taking care and i hope you're minding yourself and i will chat to you next week in another video bye bye